Conscious Fork, where we'll be forking around with consciousness and food in our kitchen. I'm Dove, and this is my guest, Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm visiting from the Boston area where I am a health, fitness, and life coach, and I am so honored to be here. Yes, and I love her so much. She's a good friend of mine and a business mentee of Nicole and I in Twin Flame Revolutions, and we're really excited to have her here in our kitchen today. Um, Nicole's behind the camera. Hello, hello. In and giving some love. And if you guys are brand new to this, um, this is just a show where you get to pop in, talk about food, meet some guests, and talk about some conscious issues. Some of which relate to food and some of which don't. My favorite place is to be in the kitchen. Um, I think food is love and I love to share it. It is what nourishes these bodies that get us around so that we can do the amazing things that we're meant to do here. So it's a pretty important thing and it's a fun way to get started. So I'm super excited and we're going to be talking about different things. We're going to talk about food today and we're going to be talking about the body and consciousness. But for today's menu, we are going to be making some salads and some greens that maybe are not expected. Um, so we were talking the other day about food and you said you really like greens. And so well, greens. greens at every meal. <laughs> so every I, was, meal. I was thinking like that people always expect them to be cold. Yeah, no, I don't. I um, roast them. I saute them. I have an omelet or even a hot dog, throw some kale on top, <laughs> whatever it is, you gotta get those greens in there. Put it on everything. So I decided that we're gonna make some stuff with some greens today and I actually have a surprise for Sarah. So don't turn around. So one of the things about this show also is that we're gonna just be diving into what I have in the refrigerator. And luckily, I went to the farmer's market pretty recently, so I have a special bouquet for Sarah. Oh my God. <laughs> Wow. Days, days. Yes. And if you can believe it, these are actually all different types of kale, um, which is pretty cool and I'm very excited about. So this is kind of the best bouquet you could give somebody because it is all love and all food. Um, you know, before we got started here, we were just talking about something that I thought was pretty important, which was that a lot of time people say they don't have time to prepare these things. And um, you reminded me of a story that we talked about last Great year. Great story. Yeah. So we were talking about um, the practice or kind of the trend of celery juicing. Yeah. And I was like, who wants to do that? I honestly don't love to be in the kitchen, but I really care about what I put in my body, how my food tastes, and it's really important to me to eat well. But um, I just, the idea of dealing with all that celery and spending like an hour with my juicer, it's not sure. right up my alley. And then Dove said something really powerful, which was, <laughs> well, I deserve that. Mm -hmm. I deserve the time. And like, why can't I wake up and give my body exactly what it needs? And I'll always remember that. So mm -hmm. I'm so happy to be here with you and your greens. Yes. You know, it's funny because we actually, I learned about time. You know, this is a really good story. And I, as I'm doing this, I'm going to be just washing up some of these greens and we can use them. We've got some purple kale here. Um, as well as some uh, Lucindo kale, or um, they also call it dinosaur kale. Um, and then this one, you guys can actually fill in. I know I'm in the description for the recipe, I'm gonna tell you guys what it's called, but you guys can actually fill it in if you know what it is, because I, I, the name slipped my mind. We have a really great organic farmer locally um, that you know I got these from. Um, so what's really interesting is that I realized how much time we actually have in a day when I was in college. So when I was in college, I decided that I was gonna do 21 credits in a semester because I decided I wanted to see what that felt like. And then I raised it to 23 credits. And then I had to get dean permission for that. Then I decided to be the president of like every organization and be part of everything you could possibly do because it was me testing out what I was capable of and expanding through. So in order to get through that insanity, I actually had a planner that had everything down to the 15 minutes, right? So every 15 minutes of my day was planned out. And because everybody kept threatening me with this idea of like, we don't have enough time. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough time. We don't have time. And I was like, okay, well, is this a real thing? And my mind's always been inquisitive like that, right? If you guys are new to us, uh, my beautiful partner and I are conscious as mentors and, and motivational speakers. And I think I was built to do that, right? My mind always wanted to touch the consciousness of like where we are consciously and why these things are true for us and so on. So 
um, I broke it down to the 15 minutes and realized that I could get more done in a day than I could have ever possibly imagined. So, although this is not a cooking show for you to save time or do things like that, we'll be making things from scratch and we'll be staying away from processed foods and, um, and all of those things because I want you guys to have more ideas and solutions for cooking. But I want to invite you into this idea that you may have a lot more time in your day than you think, but it, it's a priority issue. And for me, you know, it's so easy for us to make food not a priority when in fact there is nothing that's a bigger priority than what we put in our, in our body. And, you know, as I'm saying this to you guys, I'm thinking like, but don't shame yourself, mm. you know, because that's such a big thing. We, we're presented with so many opportunities to eat stuff in a day. We were talking about this yesterday and we talked about it, you know, so much processed food, mm -hmm. so many, so much fast food, you know, and, and it's easy, accessible, right? That's the marketing and that's the conditioning. Um, and so it's a change, it's a transition and you're not, you're not meant like anything in life to do it perfectly and a hundred percent all the time. So if you're watching this and you're thinking like, okay, I want to try this and it'll be the first time that I cook a meal this week, or, you know, all I do is grab boxed and processed food. And this is the first time I'm thinking about something, or maybe you're on the total different end of the spectrum. And this is just fun to be in our home and to be in our kitchen and to get to know us in a different way. Um, but I really wanted to say that about judgment, right? Like it's about progress and you know, you work with people's body all the time and you probably experience people really judging oh, everything absolutely. that they do. But it was something that I was thinking about uh, when you were talking about um, not having enough time. Hmm. The thing is when you fuel your body properly and you eat the right things, foods like potatoes are gonna make you feel energetic yeah. and you're going to naturally just function on higher levels and you will get more done and that's, that's why it's so important to eat well it's just like fueling your car um you need to treat it well in order to run well and so if you're gonna if it's gonna take you an extra 15 20 minutes to wash your vegetables or do whatever you need to do in the kitchen as opposed to grabbing some fast food or even just something that doesn't isn't labeled as fast food but you're grabbing it out and it's, you don't know where it's been or what's in it. It doesn't have to be, you're going to McDonald's. I'm saying like, when you know what you're putting into your body. Yeah. That game changer. So that's, that's a great point. So a really nice thing about making your own food, right? So there's a lot of diets out there. There's a lot of fads. Like I'm not a nutritionist and I'm not a professional cook. So I will say that all of the time. And this isn't designed to replace any medical advice or anything like that. Really what we're doing here is we're just talking about ways and, and having fun in the kitchen. I'm just a home chef. Um, you know, and Sarah just said something really, really important. It's like, we don't consider um, that a lot of the things we need is we need to have the right things so we have more time and we have more energy and all of those things. Um, you know, and just to fill you guys in on what I'm doing over here. So I was just cleaning up some kale. Um, there is so much in here that one of the quickest ways that you guys can clean your vegetables and then preserve water at the same time, because we're going to talk about all sorts of conscious things, um, is to just fill your sink with water in advance and then rinse it. These are mostly rinsed in advance. So I just gave them like an extra rinse because they were in the fridge for a little while. Um, but just fill an entire thing of, uh, you know, or a big bowl. Um, and then if it's a really gritty green, um, like something like a dandelion root or arugula or something like that, you might want to fill a bowl and then let them float to the top, rinse it a bunch. Make sure you pour that out because there'll be sand at the bottom and then do it again. Um, I'm also going to save my stocks for our bunny. So she has snacks. So I don't need to throw those away. Um, but if you guys are really keen on not throwing stuff away, I've lived all over the world. So for me, I like to waste as little as I can. Um, you can just juice them. You can throw them into something that you're juicing or put them into a stock that you're boiling down. These greens are pretty strong. So if you put this into a stock, there's going to be a really strong taste of like, um, almost like wheat grassy taste, right? And so that could be a little bit much for people. Um, so, you know, play with it and see what you feel about different things. Do you need help with your leaves? Yeah. So I think, so this is depends on you as a person. Um, kale can be a little bit rough in the stock area. So especially when I'm doing something like a salad, I'm just gonna pull them off the center of the stock. Um, and you can do that a bunch of different ways, or you can leave it on. There's plenty of vitamins and all of that in there. 
But what we're doing is we're gonna have them accompany some potatoes that I just went ahead and pre-boiled. These are really beautiful potatoes. I'm gonna cut one open for you guys, even though we're gonna be doing that. These are purple potatoes. Um, they're purple all the way through. And you know what I like also about food is eating your colors. So that's not something we think about very much is eating our colors. So if you wanna play a game or like have fun with your kids, you can talk about all of the different colors that you're eating in a day. Um, and so purple is not a color and blue is not a color that we access very readily, right? You think about it like blueberries, maybe some blackberries. I don't know, what are some blue and purple things in the dark? Not a ton. Things. You don't wanna have like blue Gatorade or anything. Right. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. <laughs> We're not talking but about- you definitely wanna eat the rainbow. Not talking about blue food color. <laughs> Um, what is nice too is we've got this really dark purple kale, right? So we're two foods that are really balanced in this. Um, and what were we finding about these? Did you say that they had, I, I love, Sarah's got all these nutritional facts. And what were you saying? Did you say they actually had potassium? They do. That's Potatoes, pretty cool. Potatoes, um, they're a healthy starch, full of energy, potassium, calcium. So um, a lot of people talk about being dairy free these days and where you're gonna get your calcium, you better have milk and yogurt and that's not true. So, uh, Potatoes is one of those foods <laughs> where you can get your calcium. I love it. That's not true, she says. So I left the, uh, so what I did with these potatoes is I left the skin on. I just gave them a good wash. Um, so here's something that I did not realize that people were not aware of. Um, I actually lived in a lot of third world countries and I lived in countries where there's a lot of parasite bacteria and different things. So um, I uh, always wash everything. Right? I give everything a good rinse. Um, you can use like a fruit and vegetable wash or you can use a little bit of vinegar or you can just use like good clean water if you have water. Um, alkaline water is really good for cleaning vegetables. Um, so I wash everything. So, you know, I didn't know that a lot of people in the States, um, I know you guys are watching from all over the world, don't actually wash their vegetables. And so I would say to you, um, just cause it's organic, right? And I do wanna say that everything that I'm using here is organic. We can continue to chat about that here and there. Um, but, there is um, a good reason to wash your food, even if it is organic, because people handle it and it goes in trucks and it goes in boxes and it, right? And so just because there isn't a pesticide on it doesn't mean that there hasn't been, you know, animals that touched it or people that didn't clean their hands or so on and so forth. Um, I've also got some beets that I got on the stove. So if you guys are wondering what's going on back there, I've got some yellow beets. I'm all about us eating the rainbow today and playing with salad. So I'm gonna be making a yellow beet salad as well. Um, so wash these up, throw them in a pot with some water. You can use as many potatoes as you want, depending on your family size. This is probably about two pounds. I think we have like eight potatoes, but they're pretty small. You can see them in relationship to my hand, right? So it's more like the size of like a red skin potato, something like that. Um, and so depending on how much you want, you just adjust it for yourself. Everything that I make in this kitchen is not really planned out in advance so much. It might be sometimes things I've made before that people like, or sometimes they're brand new recipes that I just pull out of the fridge. Um, you know, I talked about this in our opening episode, but when I was little, we just cooked stuff depending on what's in the fridge. Um, and I have to say, and Nicole can attest that yes. I made some stuff um, that uh, has been surprising where we had like nothing, but maybe like rice ramen I, I remember it was like rice ramen noodle a fennel bulb some <laughs> um miso paste and like maybe some hot chilies that's like all we had in mm, the dish to that make was good dish. she was like this is the best thing i've ever had no well that sounds good but i'm glad that i'm here for this yeah <laughs> most people would have been like what the heck is that okay so i think we're gonna have kale cooks down a lot so maybe we'll do like a little bit more than what we've got here um, you guys do as much or as little as you want. This is just going to be lunch for a couple of us. Um, so, you know, you figure out how much you want to do this. You can always increase the uh, proportions. So the nice thing too is if any of you guys are thinking about, you know, and you can give me your input because you're more of a specialist in this kind of thing. But what I noticed too is that if people are trying to uh, manage weight or manage health or just well-being, it's simple to... Like the simplest thing to do for me in the past has always been to manage and see the ingredients and also keep them kind of simple, right? So it's like five, six ingredients in a meal, you know what's going on, it's easier to pay attention to what's going in your body and also sauces, you know, making your own sauces versus having- Salad some... dressing, speaking of salad. Yeah, salad dressing and 
Listen, I know a lot of you guys ask us all the time, like what is healthy, you know, not healthy. Um, oh, and PS, I'm leaving the potato skins because I did wash it. Um, these are organic. Um, I will be super honest. I'm leaving the potato skins on because Nicole loves them. Yes, They're I really do. They're There's really... a lot of nutrients, vitamins, minerals in skin. So keep it. I don't and, like potatoes. And I know it. And I love um, it. So I'll be, I'll, I'll just call myself. I don't like potato skins, but I'm leaving them because they're good for you and everybody else loves them. And that makes me happy. Um, and I think that honestly, I'm going to do um, all of the potatoes, but I'm going to keep them kind of separate and put it on at the end. Also, you know, it was interesting because we were talking about, I'm going to grab some from the pantry. Sarah, tell me also something interesting about salads and protein, because I think somebody might be you know, wondering why we haven't. Although I am adding a protein, but we'll talk about that in a second. That? Chickpeas. Yum. Yes, so I really like, so in this dish, I also think it's important that we always have a little contrast in texture if you guys can create it. So we've got potatoes that are soft, got kale that's gonna be sauteed and it's gonna be a little bit chewy. Um, I don't eat a whole lot of chickpeas um, or beans necessarily, but I do like to throw them in here and there. And um, I'm gonna throw some chickpeas into the oven with some Middle Eastern spices and like seasoning and get them crispy. You put them on a high temperature if you guys are okay doing high temperature and it, they'll actually get really nice and crispy. But we were, we were laughing because we were talking about how much is actually in veggies and salads and stuff anyway. Absolutely, so I recently went out to eat and I ordered this amazing salad just, just like this, full of stuff. And um, the waitress said, no protein? And I was like, well, there's protein in it already. And no, I don't need chicken, steak, or fish in order to have a healthy, balanced meal. And um, I just thought it was fascinating that we have gotten to a place where animal protein is synonymous with protein. And they're not necessarily, um, doesn't have to work with that. Yeah, so even if you guys do eat, like, do, you know, because the thing is, too, is that this... Speaking about food and speaking about it consciously means that we understand that there's a variety of different things that each of us eat, but understanding what we get from each item, whether you guys um, are vegetarian, you're not vegetarian, you might be vegan, you might eat animal um, products or different things like that, it actually doesn't matter because we can still be more conscious about each piece of the food and what we're getting because we don't need a, like too much of certain things. In fact, like I could eat too much kale in a day where it wouldn't really be beneficial. Um, or we could have a salad and there might be tons of things that we have in it already. So it's really cool to think about what you're getting um, and you know, keeping it all on a spectrum and giving you guys more opportunities to be present with you know, having different um, aspects of food. Now, here's something that I'm gonna talk about a lot, which is um, oil and fats. So I cook a lot with coconut and and there are enough opinions about oils and fats than there are people on this planet. So do what works for you. But I'm going <laughs> to share and talk about what works for me. Um, I don't know. I don't, you and I have never talked about this, but I don't cook with anything. I don't raise anything to temperature that isn't solid at room temp. So what I have understood is that, and again, not doctor, um, what I have understood is that when a fat is actually a liquid at room temp, um, you, once you heat it to a, you know to a normal cooking temperature, it actually breaks the fat down to a point where it can be carcinogenic. Now that actually means that it's going to take um, and break down the aspects of the body, all those like good things that you get from blueberries and food and that you're trying to put into your body, it gets broken down. So I tend to recommend that people stick to um, things that are hard at room temp. So that could be coconut oil, could be ghee, could be butter, could be animal fat if people want to use that, um, but that won't break down. And I did not know this, so I was cooking a lot with olive oil. That was mm -hmm. my favorite thing. Now I use a lot of olive oil, but I keep it raw, and I will put it on after the fact. Um, I know that for some people, the idea of coconut oil is like, you know, they're not used to the taste. I still recommend that you do the unrefined. That's the one that tastes like coconut. But I can promise you that after a little while, you don't really notice it and or you can totally mask it. Um, but we'll talk about how to deal with it, like in Italian dishes and things like that later. Um, but yeah, do you play around with coconut oil at all? Absolutely. Awesome. Delicious. Yeah. And also you could just 
put it in your coffee, in your tea, you can eat it plain, you know, so on and so forth. Um, but it's really, really nice. I'm gonna do a pretty decent amount. So I did about a tablespoon in there. Um, and then let's just kind of see what we got in the pantry. Do you like kind of Middle Eastern spices? Yeah. Okay. All right, so yes. here's what I got. I've got some turmeric, which is really good anti-inflammatory. You should have that on hand at all times. Yeah. Yes. I like to have the root and then juice it in my food. Mm. Um, but turmeric, if you guys do want to have it dry, and then I've got some awesome just shawarma Middle Eastern spices, which- Is it spicy? It's not. So I'm not trying to kill you, but do you want some spicy? <laughs> So this is just uh, paprika, garlic, cumin, turmeric, allspice, coriander, and it does have a tiny bit of salt. Sign me up. So we're gonna be over here for a second. I'm gonna cut some of this kale, get it going. Um, all I'm gonna do is just kind of flatten it out, give it a rough chop. And you guys can do this a couple different ways. So, you know, do you like your kale cooked or you like it raw? I typically like it cooked okay. or in juices, smoothies, etc. So um, for today, then we'll do it. We'll do it cooked. Um, so I am gonna do this like as a warm kind of par cook then. Um, and when I say that, I mean you could also do it sort of stewed, but I'm not gonna do it that way. So we're just kind of cutting it in. I would say about an inch size um, width pieces. Um, if you guys do wanna do this raw in the salad, you can totally do that. But what I recommend with kale, because kale can be a little rough and a little bit abrasive, is that you go ahead and massage it. This is something people don't know. So if you make like a kale Caesar or something like that, you go ahead and, I you know, massaging kale sounds like a naughty thing to do. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> but massaging kale, what I would do is I would get olive oil on my hands and then I would go ahead and start to rub the leaves. What you're doing is you're kind of breaking down the fibers and you're making it more like a lettuce as opposed to something that is, you know, really rough, like a collard green or kale really is. Um, because it doesn't feel good in your palate when you take a bite and it's the, you know, you feel like you just bit something, you know, out of the rabbit patch or something like that. And it does start to get really, really soft. Um, yeah. I don't see nothing wrong oh my with God. a little rub and grind. <laughs> I thought Nicole was gonna ask something, but you guys have to know Nicole by now. So I'm gonna like let you feel the difference, right, between the piece that I rubbed and this piece that's not rubbed. We could have, we could keep some raw. No, no, we're all. gonna do it all cooked for today. But do you see what I mean? Like how? And honestly, that was just a quick little quick little rub down, but without the oil. So when you get the oil going, it really is incredible. I made kale for probably like three days today. So honestly, getting it into a pan that fits is gonna be kind of next level. So in terms of you guys making this fit your palate, and again, as I was saying, palate changes, it grows, it adjusts, you need to train it. Um, so uh, you can add garlic to the pan, um, you could steam this, you could roast this. So I'm giving you guys ideas, but honestly, there is no right way to do it. For the sake of today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just saute this in a pan. And just keep it really super simple. I actually am just gonna add a little bit of um, water and coconut oil um, and just get it wilted down a bit. And I think this actually is gonna fit all in here, although it's gonna look like a giant pile. This is gonna cook down for you. The other thing too, you guys can prep this in advance, um, any of this, and that's the nice thing about these things. You can prep it in advance. You can use your leftovers, like be creative. A lot of people say they can't be creative in the kitchen. I think mostly it's out of fear um, that something is gonna go wrong, or it's not gonna be you know, good enough, or so on or so forth. So I wouldn't worry a whole lot about that. So I just put the greens on. I'm gonna let them saute with a little bit of water, a little bit of coconut oil. Um, probably keep them super straightforward and simple. Um, and I'm just gonna give the chickpeas a quick toss. Those guys look like they're doing do it. great. I just wanna make they sure smell good too. they're not stacking up. They do smell good. I know we don't have uh, smell access through uh, social media, I guess, <laughs> or a TV, but one of these days, right? Somebody's working on that, I'm sure. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get um, some herbs together. Um, so I've got- smell. Yeah. Rosemary. 
Mm. I know, this is like the best. So I've got a giant thing of rosemary. I've got some um, cilantro. I've got some dill. I've got some fresh thyme. And I've got some um, scallions, which I think are just absolutely delicious. I did not know, did you guys know that there is a entire website for people that hate cilantro? Yeah. I did not know that. I. It's a it's a really it's a hated beer. herb, huh? Yeah, really? it's a really, I guess, distinct flavor. So people that don't like it, I don't think it, their palate makes it even taste like people do. Yeah. Like, wow. And it's a really strong, different experience for them. Interesting. So I'm not surprised because it's a passionate thing. It's a little bit different than like, huh. oh, I don't really like the taste of chocolate or something. I think that's super interesting. Uh, you guys might not like cilantro. So this... This is any herb you guys want to use. Um, so I really like herbs. I like herbs n not just for, well, there's a million reasons. So first of all, what's really nice, and you can use some scissors, I'm actually gonna grab some scissors. So cooking shears make this a little bit easier. Um, it is not just an incredible source of flavor, which then allows you guys to reduce additives. So I'm gonna make this salad dressing just with herbs, um, some ground mustard, some, mm. um, yeah, I love ground mustard or any kind of mustard that you guys like, but I like to keep it like, you know, really clean mustard as much as possible. Um, and some really good quality organic olive oil, some salt, some pepper, um, and some garlic. Um, but, um, herbs are also so medicinal. So it's interesting to me, I'm a cilantro nut. Um, do you like cilantro? Love it. Okay, love good. It. Just making sure that my home base here that's eating this likes it. If you guys don't like it, omit whatever I'm doing. Um, but cilantro is actually a um, detoxer of heavy metals. So it's really, really cool. Right. Yeah, we take in a lot of heavy metals in our life environmentally yes. we take in a lot of heavy metals i'm just stirring this kale up um it's wilting down pretty quickly um and i'm not gonna have it get overly cooked um and you guys can also again play with your texture if you want it to be crispy then you guys can saute this in a more crispy way also roasting kale is is really really mm. fun does get super crispy and you can even make kale chips which is something that I might make for you guys one of these days. Um, so it's really fun for me to experience, um, it's really fun for me to experience all of the different medicinal properties of these herbs. So anyway, heavy metals are in everything that we, we have in life at, at this point. Um, and so getting them out of your body is really helpful. Um, the interesting thing that I wonder if somebody, you know, out there is a nutritionist and whatnot, I wonder if some people who really dislike the taste actually have an imbalance or like there's a lot of heavy metal in their body. Cause sometimes when we have something that is sort of medicinal to us, but the body is so toxic, it will reject it. Other times you might crave it, which is interesting as well. Now, if you're out there going like, I'm really craving sugar, at no point is that your body telling you something that you need, but it is your body telling you something that's out of balance. So that's kind of a good example. Definitely. So if we've got a lot of parasites in the body or a lot of yeast in the body or a lot of fungus in the body, um, which happens just from environment, it happens from um, imbalance, uh, a lot of gut health issues, you know, and so things, you know, go out of whack in the body. Um, so paying attention to what we do crave is pretty, it's pretty relevant. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the green onions right into the potato mixture that I'm doing. Oh, it's beautiful. And it's easier for me to do it that way. And then just chop up everything together super fine. I've yes. got dill. I've got some cilantro. Um, I think I would have probably also added some basil to this if I had it. Uh, it's so alive too when you're eating. The other thing that I really like too is considering how much live food you eat a day. Um, having said that, that doesn't mean that um, I do raw as a diet. So actually raw as a diet is something that doesn't um, work perfectly well for my body system. And I, I really invite you guys too to consider the fact that you just get to play and figure out how your body feels better. It's very important that we understand that each body dynamic is so versatile that there isn't gonna be a way yes, of eating absolutely. that's just universal for people. It's just not. And even if we get down to as specific as blood typing and all of that stuff, it's still not universal because you may have an imbalance, you might have gut issues, you might come from a different um, ethnic background where your body is more uh, hot, 
cold, it's more damp. It's, you know, so many different things, right? That's more like Eastern, um, Eastern medicine kind of wording here. But there's so much going on inside of us that leads us to be unique. So I really do invite you guys to play with these things and to play with what feels, you know, feels good for you in what you're eating. I always tell my clients that um, people ask me a lot my opinion on certain diets and eliminating entire food groups. And my recommendation is to always um, pay attention to how you feel after eating certain things. Maybe take a designated period of time um, cutting out something and That's seeing if it makes a difference. And then even if it does, it doesn't mean you can never have that food again. Um, I personally cut out dairy in July and had a positive experience with that. Um, my skin cleared up, I felt a lot better. That said, um, I leave it out on a daily basis, but if there was dairy in this meal, I would absolutely have a little bit. So just being aware of how your body reacts and processes food, certain foods, yeah. it's totally trial and error. And that's where I would start when it comes to the decision to cut out certain things. I love that. I think it's really important. I it's think really that, personal. yeah, it's really, really personal, you know, and just like bringing you into my home and sharing my food with you, um, you know, that was built for us to be more personal and connected with you guys. Um, and so this is, this is your personal journey. And that's mm. why dumping your judgment, your stories, you know, and the thing too is that health and well being, it, it's such a dynamic between the mind and the energy and then the actions you know and so it's like we we can't ignore the multi-dimensionality of ourselves right so like getting into the esoteric it's like this this is here you know and this is a thing and this is has density to it and it needs to go into my body and then it generates energy and on the other hand you know if everything in my mind is broken down if i think like you know, I can look at this kale and believe enough that this kale is so bad for me and that I am such like a loser and that, you know, I can't do anything right, that there's almost no benefit that's gonna happen to my body. And so it's really interesting to understand that everything works in balance and works in system together. So if we're really positive and we're doing all our breath work and we're like incredible and we're on it, you know, um, but then we're not taking any time to kind of balance that other piece out. And it's funny because I just heard I just heard my guide saying, well, like if you're totally, totally there, um, you can alchemize anything. And I'm like, I'm not going there right now, guys. <laughs> well, if, you know, if, if you know the kale is good for you, but you are so unhappy with eating who it. you are and where you are right now, and you really don't want to eat it, but you're eating it because you feel like you have to. Ooh, good That's point. just it's not gonna have the same effect. No, it's so punishing, right? So defeating, yeah, yes. so don't eat something and be like, like let's say you really dislike, okay, there's so many green vegetables. Yes, like is. let's find other dark green vegetables. There's so many types of kale. Yeah, so or- you've had kale before and you're like, no, nope, not for me. Try right. a different one. Or we talked about like all of these different kales that taste different, have different uh, physical properties, but that's such a good point because, you know, we, the, the energy behind what we're doing and the mentality around it is actually more vital than the physical because that's the place that we can move things the most is in the energetic, yeah. in, the, in, the, in the conscious realms, right? Um, and so it's really interesting to to have that perspective and to be aware of that. And you know, even when I do, like I'm completely free in the fact that there are things that I like that are technically not amazing for me. You know, we talked about eating things that don't make me feel good, right? So uh, there are plenty of things that don't make me feel very good. A lot of carbs, or not like a potato carb, but a lot of like grains don't make me feel good. They make me feel very heavy and I try to, you know, kind of lay off the grains. Um, but my attitude around eating that, I think is just very different. If I eat it and I'm like, you know, I'm not going into shame and guilt. I'm not going into story. This is not bad for me. I'm not doing a bad, Thing. So thinking about how, what is your languaging, you know, what's your food languaging? What's your mm. mentality around that? Um, so I'm working on some dressing just to fill you guys in. I put about, I would say this is approximately half a cup, maybe yes. a little bit more of olive oil. Um, I like to make, you know, I'm just grabbing some garlic. I just like to make uh, a little bit more dressing than I'm going to use for a dish. Um, also, don't be scared of um, putting healthy fat in your food. 
Um, so this is really good, high quality olive oil. Um, I try to use, you know, good quality olive oil or organic olive oil or whatnot. And um, you don't have to be really scared of fat. I think people- oh, Calories. Yeah. Um, I love the saying and always tell my clients to uh, count chemicals, not calories. Um, it's more important Ooh, than anything else. Good, hashtag that guys, count. <laughs> right. Chemicals, not calories. We, uh, yes. Instinctively, I think when there's a label on something, such as olive oil, we're trained to look at calories, and then I think many people after that might go to protein or fat. But what's most important is where where these calories are coming from. Yeah, what so it ingredients, is. Ingredients, 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 and then any difference in the fat content, protein, calories, etc. Almost doesn't matter when you know where what the source is. And for anybody that like is not aware of what a calorie really is, I mean, really what we're talking about is energy input, right? Just we like, them. yeah, energy, energy in and out. And, and we're, we're in such an exhausted society. Like who isn't saying like, I'm tired, right? Like I need more energy. Yeah. And so we go to things and we're not even aware, like maybe we're so deficient in calories that your body can use as fuel, mm. right? Like calories that your body can generate. So thinking about, we say it all the time, but we miss it. See, here's the really interesting thing is that we say stuff all of the time in our culture and our society and our language, all of that, and we miss what it actually means. Because we're saying like, I food, food is fuel. How many times have you heard food is fuel? But then how many, how many times have you integrated that concept into like, whoa, I need it. I need it frequently. I need to be aware of what it is. Um, and so I just think there's so much well, there. Well, how many times have you heard food is bad? I, sh I want to lose weight, so I'll skip a meal. So yeah. the less food I eat today, the better. That's and true. So much conditioning. And so therefore, how many people are feeling negativity subconsciously, mm -hmm. right? Like you might eat that meal and be like, oh, I really shouldn't have done that. Like I just ate a bunch of potatoes. Like I just ate a bunch of, and so you immediately start to create this cycle and then you're producing anxiety in the body. You're producing stress, you're pro pro producing cortisol. You're feeling really uncomfortable. You're feeling very yucky. And then what we know now scientifically more than anything is that your thoughts and your words about yourself are gonna have it the biggest impact on your actual genetic and physiological restructuring. Like there are studies even in schools now where kids are talking to plants. You know, they're talking to the plants and the plant is dying because it's saying you're abandoned, I don't love you, or it's not talking to you at all, or saying I hate you. Then on the other hand, you've got, you know, the, the possibility of talking with kindness to yourself. And we think like, well, you're a giant plant. Like, why are you not? You're a giant bioorganism. Like if you're saying these things to yourself, why would that be different than, you know, the effect that it has on a plant or the structure of water um, or anything for that matter? So, I mean, I think that the way we're talking to ourselves and the way we're told to talk to ourselves is huge. And we also think that on this health journey or personal journey, things have to take a long time. And that shift in mindset when it comes to how you approach your day, your cooking, your meals. Yeah. Can be faster than you think. It doesn't have to be this long, grueling journey when you um, become more aware of a lot of this stuff. You know, you just said something really important though. You use the word journey. And I think that as a society, we are, we're very focused on having an instant gratification. We're trained with yes. that, right? We're even here right now having an engagement You're in my home. We're talking, we're raising and shifting consciousness. We're talking about food, we're talking about the body. But really, we're able to do this in like instant real time because of our social media. We've got phones, we've got devices, we've got everything gives us an instant result. So you use the word journey and it's like everything, our evolution, everything in life is about evolution. It's about growth, it's about processing. When people come to Nicole and I um, and, and they they, they ask us about, you know, how they can get through their traumas or they want to work with us or whatever, you know, they miss, a lot of people miss, right? Not everybody misses this concept of like, it is a process, it's a journey and you can be in celebration of that journey. Yes. And so making a shift today, making this recipe or playing around or sitting here and shifting your consciousness or sharing this, you know, with other people, you are already in that you're in it. It's not like you're only valid in that journey when that end goal of like I lost the 10 pounds or I increased the energy happens it's like that that journey is valid in the experience that you're having like you're there um so you know I think if you start to think about it less as a graduation and more as a process and journey Absolutely. really shifts things um I'm gonna update you guys I grated some garlic I like to use just a, a cheese grater or you can use a plain or a zester or whatever you want to do. Um, I like raw garlic. If you guys don't, that's okay. It is really antibacterial. It's good for your immune system, um, kills parasites and bacteria. 
Um, I'm not going to get too grim on you guys, but don't think because you're in the United States that we don't consume and have parasites in our body that messes with our moods, it messes with our hormones, it messes with our ability to not crave and eat yes. things that our body doesn't want. So it's actually quite complicated. What the parasite craves, you will crave. <laughs> Get in there, babe. Tell us about it. Oh, I love it so much. Um, I just headed over to the pantry. I grabbed some whole grain organic mustard. Um, use whichever one you like. Um, the Germans do make a great mustard. Yes, so they do. I love when I go to um, like a European market or wherever I can access stuff. You know, it bums me out because food quality, you know, in the States is really different. It's really, different. It's really, really, really different. Yeah, I've got it under control. My, my darling wife is asking me if I've got it. You know, these claws actually do come in handy. People ask me how I cook in the kitchen with these, and I have no problem for the most part. Um, and I get to even use claws to open things. Um, so I'm gonna do, again, probably about a tablespoon. Is that the spicy? This is not a spicy. It is just an organic whole grain. It'll have a, it'll be bold. But like a bold scoop. I know, but it's, there's a lot of oil in here. Yeah. Um, also, uh, this one just happens to also be gluten-free and so on. And since we're talking about ingredients, let's take a look at this. We've got organic um, distilled vinegar. We've got mustard seeds, salt, um, and organic turmeric and spices. So, okay. yeah. And this one does look like it's got, hold on one second, I want to check something for you guys. Just paying attention to, it says it has zero grams of sugar, but it does show sugar as an ingredient. So you can pay attention because a lot of times there's sugar hidden and stuff. So technically within the serving. serving that I just put in, there really isn't any sugar, but if you wanted to look for one that doesn't have it at all. Um, I was at a point for a while where I was looking for things that didn't have that added even a little bit. Um, so you can kind of play with that and see what works best for you. Oh, let me check those chickpeas. Okay, these guys are looking like they could probably come out. Yeah, they can go a little longer. Kale looks good. Getting pretty crispy. Yes. Kale, I think, is where we need it to be. So I've had this on low, guys, probably about 10, 15 minutes. I'm gonna turn that kale off um, and then go ahead. And I've got a handy dandy gadget because Nicole likes gadgets. I so love you, gadgets. What is this for? This is actually for like you can actually, lattes. Yeah, you can make milk a little froth and foamy. So, um, but we use it for, it doesn't work as well with the oil because it doesn't move as fast as it does. Well, you know what it does? It's a little blocked up with the herbs. But what I really like the most, you let me see if process. I shake it. Let me see. Yeah, I like to shake it. Do you want dressing. me to jump up and down and no, do how I shake it? I want to see if I have a top this. This is going to be miraculous. You can see we are doing this in the real kitchen and kind of in real, real time. time. Because I'm going to go with just doing it this way for now because I don't have a shaker, but I love to shake my dressings, especially if they're mustard based, because they will actually get so whipped up. Um, but for this, it also doesn't matter because I'm not really putting this over a salad, I'm mixing it into everything. Um, and I think we will do, so I think I'm just gonna leave it here, but you guys can also add lemon juice and you could add like a balsamic vinegar if you wanna do something like that. Are you a vinegar person? I do like vinegar. Well, you yeah. know what, for a little balance, let's throw some white balsamic in. My signature salad dressing is a lot like this. Oh, oh tell oh, me about wow. your signature, signature salad dressing. A little olive oil, uh -huh. vinegar, Similar mustard situation, garlic, herbs that I have on hand, and I throw a little bit of honey in there. Yeah, but it yeah. depends also on the uh, on the vegetable situation. So not every. Yeah, not yeah every. you know I love. It makes a good point. I love doing like a basic maple. Uh, doing a maple balsamic dressing is really really good. You do like some good grade maple syrup balsamic vinegar, olive oil, um, and you shake it up really good. It's a nice fall situation. Agreed. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some um, kale in this bowl now and get started on assembling this. Are you guys hungry yet? Are you hungry yet? Starving. So okay, hungry. amazing. So let's let this kale go into like a large salad bowl, let it cool down just for a couple minutes, it's wilted way down. And actually to get the 
flavors into the kale. I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of this dressing on there now. So here's the other thing too, if you guys want to reduce the amount of dressing that you're having, incorporating it at different layers is really gonna help you. So I'm not scared about eating you know, healthy amount of olive oil here, I don't think anybody else here is. Nope. But if you incorporate this in, so my hands are clean and I'm doing this for the fam, so I'm toss, tossing with the fingers, you guys do as you like. Um, now we can absorb this at this level. I'm also gonna go ahead and put some uh, aminos. I really like uh, liquid aminos. Um, and this gives, do you do liquid aminos? Yeah. Yeah, so this gives, it's, I don't think it tastes like it soy. Right. Um, I just think it tastes like a little bit nutty and fermented. Um, it's a nice way to get some sodium, and I do like to put it on raw as opposed to cooked. Um, I've also got some of these yellow beets because we talked about making the rainbow. I know they look a little gnarly because I have these bad boys uh, boiling. You can roast them. Depends how sweet you want the flavor. Um, and I just usually tend to peel them with my fingers. You can also just use a paring knife. Um, this is something my mom taught me to do, is to peel with a paring knife. If you yes. guys don't feel comfortable with this, you do not have to do that. Um, I don't want anybody cutting themselves in the kitchen. That color is gorgeous. We talked about eating the colors today. So I wanted to make sure, I said, you know what, this dish does need a little side of color. And I was going to make this as a separate salad, but I'm kind of feeling these will look beautiful right in the salad. What do you think, Sarah? Should Definitely. I put them with together? Those potatoes? Yeah, yeah we're going to put them all together. All the antioxidants and the bright colors. Look at this color. I don't know. I know some of you guys are not into beets. I hear you. Um, so this is why I like to peel them just with my hands if I can because it comes off and then I don't. You know, I'm the type of person where some days I love them and some days I, I'm not in the mood. And you well, know what? Okay. You don't have to eat pizza. Right? Yes. I love that statement. We have choices today, people. We do. And you know what? Here's the thing. Today's a beat day. Yes, it yeah. is. You know, Nicole just said something really powerful. And first of all, check check this out. This is just so freaking beautiful. That I think beets awesome. are just right. Nature. Yeah, amazing. So, Nurture. I have to say something about what Nicole just said. I think it's really important, you know, choice. So we we often talk with our clients and work on this subject and people don't realize the importance. I mean, this is, couldn't be more beautiful. Um, oh, of yeah. understanding that you're in choice all of the time, you know? And so what is one of the, the most yucky feelings that we have is like, we talked about before our perspective around eating, um, we're gonna go back to that childhood rebellion, that sabotage, that feeling of wanting to fight somebody, that feeling of somebody being the enemy, when we think like, oh, I have to eat that because it's good for me, right? How how bad is that psychology? That psychology is when we were kids of like, you know- It's punishment. Uh, eat that because it's good for you. Eat your vegetables, you can't leave the table, right? And then for some of you guys, there might be real trauma there. You know, real trauma around, you sit there um, until that's gone um, and, you know, you have this experience that- Well, there's also the clear your plate. You can't leave the table until you clear your plate. Right. And then, I mean, in the last 10 years or more, plates have gotten bigger and bigger. So if you've been trained to clear your plate, you're gonna be in real trouble. If you're, How is uh, that? I'm eating the beets. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Awesome. You're right. So there's, so there's a lot of mentality, a lot of things. So thinking about, I'm bringing this up for you guys to start thinking about what it is that you were taught, right? what you believe, why it is that you believe that, um, and how it's impacted you. But coming into not being in the energy of obligation, I have to chew this because you guys are, mm. okay, not coming into the energy of obligation around anything. There's choice, right? So you don't have to do this. You don't have to do any of it. You don't have to eat anything. There's nothing you have to eat and there's nothing you have to do. But then we can start to think about the consequence of the things that we do and the things that we don't do. Right? So if you're not feeling good and you want the energy and you start finding ways to produce that energy for yourself, then you get to shift things within your own life. So I really want you guys, to, and, and as you're hearing this, you're letting your consciousness shift. You're letting your consciousness shift around what it is that is right or has to be. And before we talked about this idea that, you know, it gets to be unique to you. So you get to be on this exploration with yourself and, you know, find out what feels good for you. Do you want to grab me the salt? There's some Himalayan salt back yeah, there. Sure. Give me a couple grinds on the 
I think we need. It's not a grinder. Oh, well, a shake, a shake. A shake. I don't know. Shake, I don't remember it it shake it. Yeah, just shake it on there. I didn't salt it beforehand, I so. I don't cook with salt, and it's been one of my worst qualities, I've been told. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a cool statement to talk about. So a lot of people are scared of salt. I'm not going to get into that, but what I am going to get into is that, um, you know, when we don't, so I like to salt things, some things that I'm cooking, I think are important to salt when I'm cooking, but also if you do want to reduce salt for any reason um, in your life, but I have to say that good salt has a lot of things in it that we need. Yes. So Himalayan sea salt, really good, like good, there are many types of salt, right? And there's also salt that has lots of things in it that is yucky because we can pay attention to that. But um, we can reduce it by adding it after the fact because then it sits on top of the food. And um, honestly, for things to taste good, there is a sort of magical science to the brain, which is um, fat, salt, and heat. I think there's actually a show called this, and I, I think it's very fascinating. So I want you to understand that the way that things change in taste is from mm. the amount of salt, uh, the amount of fat, and the amount of heat that you brought to a particular item. And so you are going to lose flavor for sure um, when you don't have salt. And so. it's different to cook, to put the, it matters when you add the salt. So it does when it's in the frying pan versus just dumping it on. Um, when you sit down, it's different too. I think I just get so excited about the food and the colors. Wow. I'm eating gonna, that I don't even miss it. I'm going to throw these little croton like chickpeas. Oh, yeah. These guys got really nice and crispy. Yes. You can hear them. And we're just going to throw these on top. Faster, faster, faster. <laughs> See, She's like, this is out. how my talons come in handy. How many of you guys have the superpower? Oh, look, we're losing chickpeas. That's okay. How many of you guys have the superpower wow. to uh, touch a burning hot dish? <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do, though. Party trick. So you see, I used most of that. Now we're talking about for, you know, a lot of people. Um, what I'm going to do is, what would be nice on top of this is if you guys are tahini people. I don't have tahini. You could do a drizzle of tahini on top of that. That would be epic. If you guys um, have some lemon at home or some, you know, some sort of citrus, that'd be really nice as well. And I'm just gonna put a tiny drizzle of olive oil on top of that. And that is it. We oh, have got yeah. a non-traditional rainbow colored salad. Um, we have lots of greens, lots of vitamins, lots of color. It's warm. Cause believe it or not, we are in Florida right now and it's freezing today. Um, so a lot of you guys are in, you know, in the part of the world right now where it is a little bit cold still and letting your body eat foods, at temperatures that adjust to the season. Um, also we've got roots here. They're super grounding and that's really important as well. Um, and it is also seasonal for the time of year we're in to have things that are sort of in this um, traditional wintry kind of mix. So I know that you want, do you want to take a bite of this? Yeah. Before we leave these guys, you get to, you get to do that. You're going to take a bite right out of the, <laughs> with a magic golden fork. I have a magic golden fork. I love my magic golden fork. The conscious fork. It is. It is the <laughs> conscious fork. So take a bite of anything you want. Just don't burn your mouth on those chickpeas. But they look the best. I know, they really do look delicious. And I know how crunchy they are. Yes. Can you imagine if she goes, I need a little green. This is super gross. There we go. Oh. All right. You might need a spoon. I know, it's hard to get it all in there and to eat cute on camera. I think it's... Plates? Okay, so this is good. All right, she wants to go. We have plates. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, and um, thank you guys for watching. I hope that this has been fun. I hope that it's shifted some consciousness, and that you can use the recipe um, in the description to try this at home. Adjust it. Don't be scared. Play with the things that work for you, um, and make sure that you um, are following us and subscribing so that you can get more of these episodes. Um,